Well, first of all, thank you everybody that's attending today and uh, to our MasterCAM 2023 rollout event. Definitely doing it a little bit different this year with the webinar today, followed up uh, by some other events that we'll talk about here briefly. But first of all, I'm John Goldstad. I'm the sales MasterCAM sales specialist in the Tempe, Arizona office. I cover Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, also on the screen today uh, is Jason. He's been doing a lot of talking as usual up in our Seattle office. Patrick Warren, Patrick up in the uh, Utah area. Hey Patrick. Uh, Brian Johnson in our Dallas, Texas office up there on the screen today. These are all our sales specialists. Taylor, hey, what's up man? Taylor's out of our Austin office and glad to have you. And Adam Orland, he's in our Houston office. Adam, what's up buddy? So anyway, we're uh, all on the screen. Uh, we'll be fading in and out as we go through the presentation today, but uh, Anyway, I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, up on the screen right now is our, ter our MLC CAD systems territory map. Uh, we have over 40 uh, plus years as a value added reseller. Um, our products listed up there, a lot of you know this already, uh, Mastercam of course, um, SolidWorks and Mark Forge 3D printers. Uh, so there, there's kind of our territory, you know, blue Mastercam, red we sell, you know, both products are all products, green area, all works only. And we're proud to announce uh, last week we acquired uh, the San Diego uh, CAD CAM office in San Diego, and they also cover Hawaii and Guam. And uh, so we're really excited about adding uh, adding that office to the MLC uh, family here. Uh, number one master CAM reseller in the world. Number one SOLIDWORKS reseller in the South, uh, 24 offices, 24 states, big staff. Uh, you're going to be, you know, seeing some of us today. Um, and uh, anyway, from there, I'm, I'm going to pass this over for a minute to, to Jason. And uh, Jason, why don't you talk about some of the stuff we're doing here today? Yeah, I'm Jason Coger. As John said, I'm the one with the big mouth out of Seattle. Um, I would say most of you guys in the webinar have seen me or heard from me before. So I'm sorry, but thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we're going to do the rollout a little bit different this year. Normally, we have the, the big monster room. We pack it full of people. We do the food and the drinks, the song and the dance. But uh, you're going to sit there and do nothing but listen to us talk forever, right? But what we're going to do today is we're going to do everything online, give you a little bit of information. We're going to cover the material real quickly. We're going to we streamline everything we're going to show you today so that we can focus on what has changed. But we're going to give you a, a little bit of uh, a 10,000 foot view and then we're going to do an open house later to kind of show you how to do a deeper dive into what you're going to learn. If you see something um, in the video that piques your interest, we do have a YouTube channel that if you haven't registered or signed up for it, don't worry. After the webinar today, you're going to get an email sent to you and you're going to have a link for it. We're going to make sure that you have an opportunity to see all these topics we're covering today more in depth at a later time. So uh, keep an eye on your email. Check your Check your junk in your spam folder. I know today, in the world we live in, everybody's email is getting monitored a little more tightly. So after the webinar, look for an email for, from us for our YouTube link and our tutorials. And then make sure you subscribe. If you're not already there, you should be. Today, we're going to cover the, the what's new, the tips and tricks of 2023. But equally as important, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, we're gonna have an open house. These are the dates that we're gonna be opening up our offices. Um, some of us are, are doing it big and crazy because the boss isn't looking. Some of us are a little more reserved, but we're gonna open up our office doors from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. For example, here in Seattle, we're gonna have a, a cheesesteak truck come out with burgers and fries. We've got drinks, we've got third-party vendors. I mean, we worked really hard to get some of our, some of our more premier vendors, you know, CG Tech, Robot Master, we got Verisurf coming, Renesha, Simcoe. We've got a lot of different uh, third-party products that we support to integrate with our software. And we're gonna be opening our doors and showing how these products can help you make more money faster and improve your bottom line in your shop. So we're gonna include at the end registration links to make sure that you show up and we can account for you being there. It'll run from 10 to six. So it doesn't matter when you wanna come, just make sure you come and get fed. We want you to be there and it's more of a celebration for our customers. We really want you to be part of that. So John, why don't you tell us, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'll say, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're gonna see today and then start yeah. the party for us. Yeah, thanks Jason. Yeah, a lot of ground to cover here, but basically uh, bold point wise, uh, what our agenda is today, 
is uh, you know to go over some of the uh, Opti tool paths, uh, some of the differences, you know, there and some of the improvements, enhancements, if you will, for Master Cam 2023. So yeah, Opti tool paths equals scallop, uh, deburr productivity tools that were added, some mill turn enhancements, multi-axis, some cool stuff there. And like we said already, uh, at the end, we'll do some live Q&A. But you know, anytime during the presentation, you know, feel free to type in any questions or anything that you, you know, might want to ask us. Uh, but that being said, uh, let's get this party started. And uh, first up, we got uh, Bo Rohde. Uh, Bo Rohde's out of our, he's our applications expert out of our Houston, Texas office. And take it away, Bo. And I'm going to go ahead and just start at probably one of the things that I, I'm kind of most excited about with OptiRough is we now have the option for collision checking. Uh, next thing I'll do is I'll go to my stock and notice we still have the rest material, but we also, when we turn that on now, we're going to have the option to detect undercut stock. This feature is new in OptiRough and area rough as well. Cut parameters, uh, this top part no difference. Uh, one thing you will notice that the micro lift has now moved. It's now down in the linking parameters, which we'll take a look at uh, here in just a minute. So steep and shallow, we still have our Z depths. If we look in here, we used to have to go into our minimum Z depth and we could right click and go down to Z coordinate of a point. Now we don't have to do that. We can just hit the little white arrow and we can go pick the point that we want. Or we can just say detect limits. Either way is gonna get you there. And go to my linking parameters now. 2022 was an entrance into a new linking parameter page. Uh, you have a little bit better selection or more options, let's say, of on your leads and uh, as far as your primary lead, secondary lead, when dealing with OptiRough now and your area rough as well. That's kind of just an overview. And we want to address being able to take off all of this material from top to bottom. With using inside of my parameters, I'm going to go to my holder first thing, and I'm going to say collision checking. And you notice I got 50 thou on my holder. And then I'm going to go to my steep and shallow, and I'm just going to turn on my minimum depth and say include stock. And if you don't know this, uh, we used to do a preview chain. It used to be up here on the top of the uh, window here. We just need to make sure that generate tool paths on and we can say apply. And what this does is it allows us to regenerate this part without getting out of this dialog window. So we don't have to green check, wait on it to regenerate, and then go back and open the parameters back up. If everything looks the way we expect, then we can green check and we're out, we're done. If not, we can come back in and make a change. So now that this is, this is regenerated, you'll see that we are now cutting from the top of the stock all the way down the part in those, in respect to the depth cuts that we have set in our cut parameters. So I've, I've told my step down here to be a half inch. So it's taken half inch steps down till it gets to the bottom of the part. So pretty neat thing that, that's coming about and I only see it evolving better from here. And I'm gonna go down to this third operation and we're gonna investigate this one a little bit. Now I've created another tool here and I've actually created the tool uh, a little bit shorter than the previous tool, same tool, just copied it. But what I wanna kinda of show here is same functionality but now if you look around on the back side of this part, you can see that we're not machining ever anything here. And that's because it's detecting the collision between the holder and the part itself. It's looking at that holder and it's saying, hey, I, you know, I can't reach back down that far because I'll have a collision. So common problem that you have when you're doing uh, an OptiRef or an OptiRest mill, the toolpaths, want to go through these holes from the other side. So if I look at my stock model, I've already got my underside cut. And then if I go and turn on the toolpath for this, you can see that we have these unnecessary cuts all the way down through the part. With the new OptiRough feature, Detect Undercuts, uh, we can turn that feature on 
and we don't have to go in there like you know used to we would have to say maybe skip pockets uh, we could skip all these pockets in here but we're still going to have material left in there we're going to have to go in there and address it at some point inside of our dynamic OptiRough uh, we have our rest material reference back to our one piece of stock and then right underneath that we have our detect undercuts so that's all the material that's already been removed so I'm just going to turn on detect undercuts but what we're going to see is we're going to see the tool is going to go just far enough to be able to get all this material out of the bottom of all those little windows without a lot of excessive cut time so if we look at this toolpath now everything appears to be normal but when we flip this over notice that the toolpath is just going below this bottom surface so there's no excess cuts necessarily that don't need to be made if i turn on my stock model it kind of shows a little better you can see where that toolpath is actually getting below where those pockets are and it's making sure it's getting all that material out of there as needed you can take care of it all right here inside of a single toolpath with this part here we're going to kind of just uh, go over some of the stuff that we've already kind of uh, looked at in OptiRough uh, previous to this uh, if we take a look at this first instance of this is kind of how you would have seen a part in previous uh, versions of Mastercam come in with the OptiRough. And you can see here that where it goes into this hole, you have all this wasted time of that toolpath helixing into something that's already been cut. Now you can kind of see that that tool is only cutting right where it needs to. It's not doing a whole lot of excess cutting. The biggest example here is if we look at this toolpath, we see a lot of unnecessary air cuts. If I go into my home tab and go to analyze toolpath and bring this tool over, it's making toolpaths all the way out here and further down. We don't need to make those necessary cuts. There's, there's nothing out there for it to even cut. So now with our detect undercuts turned on and what that's going to do now is eliminate that tool from going and make it unnecessary cuts for us. Now we still are you know, going to get our cuts down here all the way to the depth that we've selected. Kind of going into some of what we've seen in previous releases. If we look at our toolpath control, we have our containment boundary here. Um, this automatic used to say silhouette boundary. Uh, there are options in here to bring in a silhouette boundary and what that's for is so that Files that are being brought in from previous versions of Mastercam now will bring in that silhouette boundary and or it will bring in your boundary chain, however you've had it selected. And then there's also a bounding rectangle, which is going to put an area around just the part itself and a bounding circle. Quick, easy way for your, you know, if you have a part that's been turned off of a lathe, for instance, and it's already desized and they turned it to the outside edges of the part. So inside of area rough we have the same options that we have inside of our dynamic opti toolpath control still looks the same we have our collision checking that we can do with our holder as well but in our linking parameters notice the micro lifts not used so it's grayed out you still have the the new lead in and lead out page so what we're going to be looking at is just these little orange areas in here and you know this is kind of where we can kind of show off the, the way the new lead in lead out works. Not a horrible, you know, transition between uh, the cuts here. You see it kind of arc down, it's gonna arc up and just kind of loop around to the next tool path. And instead of a 90 degree sweep, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to like 120 degree sweep. So now we're getting a nice, pretty smooth transition from one cut to the next. We're gonna start here, go around, just gonna come out and loop around and work its way down that wall and just kind of keep us in the cut all the way down. So adjusting your linking parameters now, to me has gotten much easier. And I think it's something that everyone will be using because uh, to me it makes just makes a lot more sense. 
Right, awesome. Thank you so much for that presentation, Bo. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm Taylor Kubitschek. I'm in our Austin office and I handle a master can solution specialist for South Central and West Texas area. You know, uh, Bo did a great job of presenting, you know, some of the new features, you know, within the dynamic OptiRep toolpaths, you know, collision checking, more linking parameters, undercut detection, you know, some real good stuff here. Um, I know that it was pretty brief on the video or on the presentation. Um, and so, you know, just trying to give you guys a brief synopsis of what, you know, what's taking place. And we'd be glad to have you guys at our open house on the 16th to go into more, uh, more depth on those features. And so I believe up next, we have a David Ferguson. He's with our uh, Washington office. He's been with um, MLC for seven years as an application expert, and he's going to talk about the equal scallop and uh, some new features with the machine group setup. So with that said, David, go ahead and take it away. Hello, this is David Ferguson with MLC CAD Systems, and I'm going to show you one of the new features for the Equal Scallop toolpath. It's the step in option for REST machining. Um, I've got a part on my screen, and I've been working on uh, some of these smaller pockets here, and I've got it semi finished down, but I've, I've left a lot of material here in the corners. And traditionally, what I would do is I would use a, an Equal Scallop toolpath uh, set as a REST option to go ahead and come in and just sort of clean out those corners. Now, the worry I have there is that using a small tool like this and driving it into the corners, I'm gonna go ahead and run the risk of either galling or, or even breaking that tool. So what I can do now in 2023 is with an equal scallop toolpath, I can go to my stock page and I now have the option to use a step-in distance. Uh, that allows me effectively uh, to set almost like a depth cut uh, sort of a, a max stock engagement uh, for the rest material, if you want to think of it that way. Um, the difference that makes to the toolpath is pretty striking. Um, here's an equal scallop not using step in. If I look at this from the side, you can see I am just basically going down to that surface, uh, not really any sort of working into the material, just burying the tool almost. Uh, using the step in value or the step in option, uh, that changes that tool path and allows me, if you kind of look at it from this angle, uh, to drive that tool in uh, gradually uh, in a controlled way. So I'm not going to risk bearing or, or, or um, galling up or overloading that tool while I'm working in those corners. Now, one thing about the step in option uh, that you want to know is that it is primarily used as a semi finish option. So I'm really only using it to clean out those corners and prep that surface you know, for a really good finish pass. One of the largest changes we've seen to Mastercam since I've been using the software. Changes to the machine group properties and the way you do your job setup. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to our machine tab. We're just going to load a, a generic mill. And then I'm going to go into the machine group properties and I'm going to go ahead and click on the files button. Now, this changes dramatically the way the interface is. In past versions, I would have had that little window that pops up with the three tabs where I can work through things. Well. This is all still the same information. Uh, it's just laid out a little bit differently. It's more in line with some of the other new functions in Mastercam. And what I have here is I have a series of tabs over here on the left. Now, in the machine tab is workforce. I can either select, confirm, or replace whatever CNC machine I am using. Uh, it tells me what machine I'm using, what control file I am using, and of course, what post processor I'm using. Then I can go ahead and go to my master model. Now, again, this is new for Mastercam. And once it's fully incorporated, this will allow me to go ahead and set my workpiece uh, directly from my screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my part as my master model. And that'll tell me if I ask for it. Yep, that tells me that is my master model. So that designates that as my uh, workpiece. Uh, I'm then going to go down to my stock setup. And from here, uh, I don't have some of the options I had in the past. It's fundamentally these days now uh, based all around a bounding box. It gives me some dimensions as to the size, which is new for Mastercam 2023. So I can go ahead and just make sure, yep, that looks like that's what I need. Uh, I can set my material selection here, or at least I can see my material selection here. I also get, uh, what's this kind of nice, I actually get a volume by square footage there, which is kind of fun. Uh, I'm then going to go to my work holding. And here, again, I can dictate or select what I'm using as a fixture. Okay? And again, once that's fully implemented, uh, that fixture can be used in Verify and Machine Sim. Uh, and the tool page allows me to set my feed calculations, my arc feed adjustments, you know, and I'll see whatever tools I have listed there. I also have a button right here to go ahead and jump right to my tool manager if I haven't preloaded any tools. 
So I can go ahead and just grab whatever tools I need, and then they'll go ahead and appear here in my job setup. And then finally, I have the machine simulation down at the bottom, where again, I can go ahead and select which machine I want to go ahead and use in this machine sim. And then once I'm done, I can go ahead and green check. And I'm just going to go up and display my stock. And everything's in the right place. And I'm now fully set up to start machining. David Ferguson. Man, you can listen to that guy and know that he's teaching about a thousand people a year. The guy's a total stud. Lucky to have him out of here. Ha lucky to have him working out of our all going to office. Uh, thank you very much, David. Appreciate it, man. Um, I really enjoyed watching the Equal Scallop toolpaths. I mean, for those of you who aren't already using it, it is definitely a cheater toolpath. There's a lot more applications than what we're getting into on the video. When you come down to our rollout on the fourth, we can do a little deeper dive into it and we'll talk about how to use that toolpath as a quick and dirty finishing all toolpath. And the machine group, um, I really appreciate it. I like how we've taken the new information and the new layout from the mill turn side and starting to incorporate it in the milling side. Um, it's really, once you get a handle on it, it's gonna help make everything more efficient and more streamlined when it comes to writing your toolpaths. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and dig into Sherman. Sherman's one of our studs out of Houston, uh, has been with us for about three years. Uh, Sherman, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the new debris options, the new view sheets, man. I have highlighted the chamfers that we're going to be doing for the debur toolpath on the uh, model itself is yellow. So the typical debur toolpath that we have below, in the past, we were kind of limited to uh, lollipop tools, ball end mills, and uh, even before the version 2022, we were limited to just being able to do uh, rounded edges and what we would get moving forward with 2022 would be the basic surface mill tool path where we can create a 45 degree now this is kind of locked inside of a three axis tool path but it kind of duplicates what we have for a surface mill operation all within selecting just the edge and not having to complete any kind of uh, 2d loft or, or surfaces to create this basic toolpath, right? Let's take a look at the Deber toolpath. And I want to start talking about some of these tool shapes that we can now implement with 2023 for the Deber toolpath. So first thing you'll notice is I have a chamfer mill inside of my parameters, which in the past, again, we were limited to uh, ball end mills and lollipop tools. Uh, we can now use chamfer end mills. And in this case, you can see that we have um, all the edges on my part pretty much specified and then I go back in and I select my user to find for the top edge now the one thing about this particular toolpath if I go to my tool axis control you'll notice that I'm locked into a three axis toolpath itself and what I want to talk about here is in this particular toolpath you may think well I could do this with my you know model chamfer or I could do this with contour what I want to show you is right off the bat, we're picking edges here. And you'll notice that if I go to my chamfer and I select my chamfer, right now we got a 45 degree and we're driving a 45 degree because that's how the, the flat for D-bar works. But I could change this to say, I don't know, we'll say 40 degrees. And now going back to my tool axis control, this would no longer be a three axis in order to get that tilt. I can run five axis and we can regenerate. And you now notice that the Deber toolpath for Mastercam will actually tilt that tool to align for that 45 degree as it comes around. So as we come around the front, there we go. Now keep in mind, this is all running off of the edge of this part like a typical Deber toolpath would and still following the rules of a 45 degree chamfer. So now I want to go down to uh, the fourth operation I have here on my list. You can see that I have a 20 millimeter tapered end mill. So inside of the tool axis control, we now have this tool contact option. And if I just click here, we can see the flutes on how this is reading in the percent. So 50% being the center of my flute length for this tapered end mill. If I wanted to run this say 10%, I can now change the contact point at which this tapered end mill will actually follow my part. 
So in this case, you can see more so at the front of the tool. And you know what, let's go ahead and change this to a, a lot larger percent. Um, let's go to, we'll say 70%. So for the 70%, and we can now see that we are running higher up on the flutes. Let's take a look at some of these advantages that we have uh, with this particular option now. So in the past, whenever we would have something like this, and as you can see, we have uh, the deburr happening in the inside, as well as uh, what we would previously have in the past using the lollipop. Mastercam now allows for you to use a ball end mill as well to do undercuts within this particular tool path. So instead of needing a custom lollipop tool to deburr, we can now see this as a end mill. So now we're deburring the undercut and now we're deburring the top. Now the importance of this is right off the bat, we're able to do this off of a sharp edge. That's one. And you see that the deburr toolpath automatically selects clearance for us uh, to make sure that we're not colliding with our part. So in the beginning of this uh, discussion here for this particular uh, feature, I mentioned about the ball end mill. And I wanna talk to you all about how Mastercam has changed another feature with this, I can now go to this 10 millimeter flat end mill to achieve the same thing. So now instead of needing any kind of drive curves for a swarf or any kind of a sinking for swarf operations, we can now do this off of a sharp edge. And it still follows that same rule for the 45 degree. And you'll notice right here inside of the parameters, we can still adjust as needed. And if we look from underneath, we can still take advantage of even a flat faced end mill on this particular feature to achieve that undercut. Mastercam has now made this a lot easier. This is a really cool feature. I really like it. We're gonna talk about view sheets inside of Mastercam 2023 and how we now have the view sheet groups. And right off the bat, we see inside of our solids manager to the left here that we have quite a few different assemblies inside of Mastercam and you can see uh, they are actually nested as well for the components inside of here. But I want to go ahead and add a new component inside of here that actually has view sheets in it as well. The very first thing I'm going to do is go to file and I'm going to merge our shaft bearing gear assembly inside of this uh, master cam file here. So I'm going to say open and right off the bat, if I zoom in, we can now see that shaft assembly that's been brought in to the wheel to the left. Now the cool thing about this is I can go over to the merge pattern dialog and inside of this dialog, I have a view sheets, merge view sheets option. And if you notice towards the bottom, I don't have any view sheets. I'm going to go ahead and turn this option on. Inside of this option, Mastercam is going to import the view sheets that come from the previous part file that we just merged in. As we can see here, I have the different components and I have the full assembly as well. I'm going to go ahead and say green check OK on this and let's let's label the view sheet one here. We'll say uh, this is going to be our main view sheet, main VS. And I want to talk about grouping the view sheets inside of Mastercam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the full assembly and holding down control, I'm going to select the other components as well that reside inside of that assembly here. Next, I'm gonna right click. And when you right click, we have this group option now and I could say new group. And I'm gonna call this shaft assembly. And just below this, we can also color code this particular view sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and set it for a color of 12, which is gonna give us the red color here. And I'm gonna green check okay. Once I green check again, we can now see the full assembly here that reside under this group signified by the little folder on the view sheet. And we notice that I can expand or hide all components under this particular group. So now we have these components nested under this particular view sheet group. All right, Sherman, thanks for talking to us about view sheets and deeper it certainly is nice keeping uh, deeper in the machine instead of having those secondary options. 
Uh, my name is Adam Bordelon. I'm in the Houston office along with Bo and Sherman. Uh, you already heard from Bo first. If you'd like to come out and meet us on the 18th, we'll be here for the open house so you can uh, take a little deeper dive into everything you're seeing today. Uh, moving on, Michael and George are going to take over and talk about productivity enhancements. Between the two of them, we've got about 20 years experience. So, uh, guys, take it away. A new feature in MasterCAM 2023 is the ability to open 2D PDF drawings. Let's see how that works. We'll come up here to File. We'll go to Merge. We'll select from the File Type drop-down menu. Down here towards the bottom, we have 2D PDFs. We'll select that. We'll grab our 2D PDF drawing. MasterCAM will bring it into our open session. I have a few options for positioning. I can select the position, I can align it, I can dynamically move that drawing, uh, I can mirror it, and I can scale it. Since I know that that drawing is a four to one drawing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale it. You can see MasterCam has opened that 2D PDF in our current session. It has also created a view sheet for that page. If I had additional pages, it would create additional view sheets along with each one of their own individual levels. This drawing, the entities are completely selectable, so I can dimension off of here. If I wanna check, say, the distance of my part to make sure my scale's correct, 12 and 12, so I know my scale's correct. Then I can figure out what size my holes are or anything like that, along with it also brings in all of the dimensions. This is nice new feature in MasterCAM. Gives you the ability to have all your dimensions there in one file. I don't have to open an extra PDF. I don't have to have a drawing on my desk. It's all right there available in MasterCAM. Let's look at the new Verify features in MasterCAM 2023. If I come into my Operations Manager and I go up to my Verify icon, you'll see that I have a drop-down menu in it now. So if I select on that drop-down menu, it's going to give me a couple new options in 2023. I can add to the current verification, or I can verify the selected machine groups. Let's look at the verified selected machine groups. What this is going to do for me is no matter which operations I've selected, whatever group is active, if I select verify selected groups, it's going to verify that whole group. So let's go ahead and try that. It's going to launch me straight into my Verify, and you can see it starts right from the beginning and finishes the part complete. And let's look at a different way of doing this. Let's pretend that I've only programmed the first five operations. I'm going to select those five operations, one through five, and this time I'm just going to come up to the Verify icon, and we're going to go ahead and run through those toolpaths. Once I'm satisfied with those toolpaths, you can see that in my timeline, it's all the way to the right. So my, all my toolpaths are finished. This time, I'm not gonna close my verification session. I'm gonna jump straight back into MasterCAM. And let's just say I've just finished the next five operations. So we're gonna pick six through 10. This time, when I come up to my verify icon, I'm going to hit that drop down menu again, and we're going to select add to current verification. It launches me right back into verify, and it puts me right back where I finished off with those last five operations. And you can see on the timeline bar that I'm no longer finished and it's added something to the end of the bar, those five operations I just selected. Let's go ahead and run through those, and you can see it starts right off where I left off, and this time, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna jump out of this session, we're gonna leave it open, but we're gonna jump into MasterCAM. Let's grab the next five operations that finish this part. I can keep doing this over and over again. And this is a very nice feature to have in the new MasterCAM 2023. In the previous version, MasterCAM 2022, I would have to create a stock model and start off from that stock model for each section of the program. If I had a real long program, I'd have a lot of stock models. Now, I can just leave my verification open, program a few operations, verify them, and then move on to the next set and keep on adding them to the verification. In uh, MasterCAM 2022 and earlier versions, the uh, slot mill was restricted to basically an odd brown slot. It has to have two parallel lines. 
what I want to do is I want to show you I've created a, a second block here I've got that has a uh, slot that does not have the two parallel lines we will go into the slot mill operation and I'm just going to go ahead and chain around the floor of that slot of the solid edge all my parameters here are set the way I like them and then I get this rejection it says that you have to have two parallel lines it's not the end of the day for me I can handle a good bit of rejection but uh, we don't have to deal with that kind of rejection in 2023 and now when I go create a new slot mill toolpath we'll see um, I can chain it ha <laughs> uh, no rejection they allowed for uh, a lot of other shapes as well some odd shapes you can have triangular shaped slots I created an irregular shape here there you have it it's pretty versatile now I think you'll find it easy to use and not have to deal with so much rejection so. awesome job guys let's give a round of applause to Michael and George I think you guys really nailed it my name is Brian and uh, George and I we both work out of the Dallas office and between the two of us we bring 50 years of manufacturing experience to this team you know for the from slot mill supporting nearly any shape of slot to the ability to open and create toolpaths directly from PDF files this release of Mastercam lets you spend less time programming and more time making parts you know, with so many new enhancements, it's hard to pick a favorite, but I think that uh, that new PDF feature alone makes this worth, worth the price of the update. Our next presentations are by Danny and Scott, and will include some of the new mill turn features in Mastercam 2023. And without any more delay, let's get started on those for you now. I'm Scott Lindsay, and I wanna show you our new toolpath for mill turn and that is our B-axis contour turning toolpath. Keep in mind that this is for mill turn only. So we'll go ahead and get our toolpath created. We'll come up to our turning and I'll drop my gallery down. I'm gonna select the new toolpath, B-axis contour turning. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my level for my solid and I've got my wireframe extracted for my turning profile. I'm going to chain from the chamfer to this chamfer here, and I'm going to green select. So uh, you'll see that this came up with the same interface that we saw in our custom threading tool path. Uh, first up, I want to select the tool. So right here, I've got an 80 degree OD rough tool path uh, selected. This is the same tool that my roughing tool path used. Um, the one thing that we got to pay attention to for tools is this toolpath requires that we have the compensation type set to center. So I've got my tool selected. Um, I'm going to leave a lot of this stuff as default. Uh, I don't need anything on the machine. We can pop in here like my tool orientation, like how it's oriented around my, uh, my head. Um, that's all good. I don't need anything on the approaches or reference points. Geometry, we've already selected that. Lead in, lead out. We're going to hop down here to our basic motion control. And you'll notice that I've got it selected on automatic. This is going to really let the tool path decide how my, til my tilting is happening. And letting it decide how that should happen. Generally, it is going to just take an average or it's going to just do the minimum tilt that it needs to and you'll see that in there in the examples um, none of this other stuff i need to select i'm going to just see what the automatic gives me so first off i can see that i'm starting at 90 degrees which is about what i'd expect and we're going to come in we'll, we're turning across this section and as we come up this wall you'll notice that it starts the tilt and preparatory to come down this this angle here okay and you'll see that it's trying to clear this back of this corner of this holder here. And it's tilting just what it needs to to clear that. It's coming through that floor, tilting back up, and it's going just a little bit beyond 90 to kind of create a little bit of clearance for this wall. So at first glance, that, that did exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, 
And if that was all I had to worry about, it would be great. But you'll notice that it probably, some of you might have noticed that right through here, not too far beyond my chuck, maybe back here, I've got a machine wall, right? And I've got a huge spindle head that it's attached up here. And I probably just buried it through the wall through here. So I know that this toolpath is not going to work out. But otherwise, it did exactly what I told it to do. It cleared this back of this holder and tilted and did everything. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this toolpath down. And I'm going to come back into the parameters and I'm going to switch the tool to a different tool. And I've got a 55 degree angle tool selected here. And I'm going to go ahead and pick that and green check and see what that'll give me. Okay, so first off, I noticed that it's it's already pre-tilted itself before it even got into the toolpath. And we'll go ahead and back plot that. And I can see that it's just barely clearing the back of that holder. But it, it really didn't, it didn't, it wasn't tilting throughout the toolpath. So what this toolpath found was that there was one angle that worked for the entire thing and it locked in on that angle and it it made the entire cut with that angle. And that's a lot better than the prior one with the other tool. With these machines, I've noticed that it's better if we can lock in at like 90 or or B0. Uh, it makes off, making the offsets easier because they're either in X or they're in Z and you start to find those ones in between and it's a combination of both of them and they're a little harder to chase. They're doable, but they're a little harder. So let's uh, go ahead and copy this down and let's show you our one other option we've got here to control this toolpath. So we're gonna come down here to our motion control and our other option is manual. If we select manual, it's wanting us to select our vector lines. Now, you do not need to select these in any specific order. I can select these in any order I want. As long as I select them all, it's the toolpath is going to do them in the order that it encounters them along the chain. So I've got them all selected, green check. So starting at 90, turned across there. We're gonna pivot back a little bit, turn that, kick back up to 90. Turn that section, we're gonna tilt forward a little bit. Turning down that radius, start to pivot back. Turning about 90. And then we're gonna kick that back and turn that up that wall. Exactly what I wanted it to do. For Mastercam 2023, we've added multiple steady rest support. We can do individual steady rests and we can do tandem steady rests. In Dick's example, I have a long part. And I already have a toolpath on it. I'm gonna to do some port toolpaths here, but I am concerned about the support. This part's over 40 inches long, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a steady rest in here and over here on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my insertion arrow up. Okay, so this is after my clamp in here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and go to turning. Go ahead and do a steady rest. I'm gonna start off with the right one. I'm just going to simply say, pick a position here. Let's go ahead and say relative. From this point, I'm just going to go ahead and move over. Let's say minus two inches here. Give me some support right there. And I'll select OK to that. And then while I'm at it, go ahead and uh, clamp it. So we'll add a steady rest right there. Now let's add one on the left side. Give it some support. Might even add. I'd even move this one here a little closer. Let's say uh, minus four. We'll go ahead and update that and he moves over. That's how fast we can change the parameters if we need to. So let's go ahead and do another steady rest. Go to the left side here, right? We're gonna go ahead and select uh, a motion. And again, I'm gonna just go ahead and say relative on the position. This one I'm going to move out six inches because I know the body of the clamps on the other side. I'll select OK to that. And then we'll go ahead and clamp it. 
Select OK. I'm going to select all of them now. And let's run this through the verify. And what I'm going to do is I need to make sure that my sinks are OK. So this is the last of the clamping right here. So make sure that the, the sub spindle comes up and clamps first. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't want anything to happen to the steady rest until the clamping is done. And then I don't want any of this port tool path to happen until after the steady rests are in place. So I'm going to go ahead before it calls up the tool. So there's my stream right there. It's going to do all the clamping first, call up the steady rest, and then it'll go ahead and do the port. Go ahead and launch my simulation. So here's our part. Go ahead and run this. So it clamps, comes over, doing some port expert stuff. We got a little bit of five axis machining going on. Go ahead and rotate and do all those ports. Great job, guys. I think you did a fantastic job of showing some of the really cool uh, new mill turn capabilities and features that are out there. Uh, my name is Patrick Warren and I'm uh, the sales rep for Utah, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Scott in our Salt Lake office for the last five years. Uh, and Danny, uh, he's one of our longest tenured employees. Uh, he's been with our MLC family for 25 years, and he's seen just about everything over that time. Uh, in fact, if we want to make him feel really bad, we should take a poll about how many people on the webinar are not even 25 years old. Uh, but I'm super excited about the level of control we have uh, on a, a turning machine with a B-axis head, not to mention uh, the ability to program your uh, steady rest and tandem steady rests. Uh, you're, that's going to give you the extra confidence in Mastercam to be able to uh, know that your program's right before you actually run it on the machine. Now, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to kick it over to uh, Brian Gleason, and uh, he looks way too dressed up for any machine shop, but he's going to give us some uh, information on the new multi-axis enhancements and capabilities. So take it away, Brian. I'm going to be talking about the changes in 2023 with multi-axis, specifically the unified toolpath. If I go ahead and look into the multi-axis gallery, it's going to be a lot more simplified and a lot less options to be looking at. Morph, parallel, along curve, and project curves are no longer in the gallery. That's because they've all been combined with the unified toolpath. Instead of having to pick each cut pattern specifically, we'll now run it through the unified, pick our cut pattern inside of there, and the nice thing is we can always change it on the fly we'd like. What about our old tool pass, well, what, you know, older programs that opened them up into 2023. We can see we have parallel, morph, long curve, and project curves, the ones that are seemingly missing from 2023. I'm gonna open up that same part file in 2023. It automatically comes in and converts them to a unified tool path for us. So as we can see that we now have unified parallel, unified morph, unified perpendicular, which is a long curve and the unified project. So let's just look at some of those options inside of there. If I go into the project curve parameters, Z axis. So all the parameters that would be used in a project are still inside that unified. There's a, another awesome feature I want to talk about with the unified. So I'm going to go ahead and open up good old a blink in here. There's two ways about going this. We can do a regular unified toolpath using a guide curve and if i go ahead get into the tool path a lot of back and forth a lot of directional changes especially we come into the ear area doing a lot of tilt so this is set up just to be ortho to surface well to combat that before we would go with a clean core technique so let's look at parameters of this before we get into that clean core. Parameters are just guide curve, one machining geometry, which is Abe's head, tool axis control, surface with tilt, ortho to each cut direction, closure control, off. Now our previous 
kind of workaround for that would be to simplify the toolpath by doing a clean core technique. So inside of here, we use the simplified shape as a drive pattern and then use the collision checking to compensate the toolpath out to Abe's head. And that worked. Worked for a long time, but we have something even better. This one, we have a nice consistent step over over the machining geometries, but we have crazy tilts. This one, we have a smoother toolpath that is not tilting near as much, but the step over is going to be inconsistent to the actual geometry that we want to be finished. And the other issue was when you have that clean core, the further you got away from the drive surface to what you actually wanted for machining geometry, you're going to get some distortion. So let's look at what our new option is. I'm going to take this first unified toolpath. I'm going to just copy it after, and we're going to make one little change. So inside parameters, tool axis control, we have a super awesome new option here. Tilt relative to reference surface. I'm going to come in, select my reference surface, clean core kind of uh, faces. And I'll let that generate. And what we're going to see is that we now have a constant step over, but our tilting is going to be much better. So it's much more, it's just smoother. I mean, we're not having to tilt all the way around the ear and everything else. Oh, we'll get into his ear. So we're no longer having all those extreme tilts. Another option inside that tilt relative is the smoothing option. And that's just going to reduce the amount of axis reversals. And that will smooth it out and make the uh, toolpath run a lot cleaner. Bunch of irregular shapes, nice smooth toolpath to a relative surface that we're now tilting to. So that's kind of like our traditional one where our clean core was inside of the head. I'm going to show another option. We have our unified morph, uh, morphing between two curves. What we do have is a bunch of tilt lines. This is how this toolpath was being controlled for the axis uh, control. Looks smooth, and then all of a sudden, drastic tilt. So you can see those kind of little tilting hiccups inside of there. Also, creating all these tool axis control, I would have to you know, maybe do a wireframe, we'll say normal to point, pick this space, create a line, and then I'd have to go and modify how I wanted that tilt line to be. Let's get something else here. On our levels, I have a bunch of lines just basically taken from the top of the curve to the bottom of the curve, and they're just kind of randomized around. I'm gonna use those to create a generic loft, I'll make sure that the normal direction is going out. I'll say okay. Now what are we gonna do with that? It's outside of the part. It's not following the part exactly. It's so definitely pretty random. Coming into our tool axis control, I'm gonna change the control style to tilt relative to reference surface. We'll pick the lofted surface that we just created, turn on our smoothing, let that generate. Why she's thinking, I'll go ahead and turn off that new uh, surface that we created. What we're going to get is a nice smooth toolpath. And it's, since it's not tilting relative to a surface or, uh, of the drive surfaces, it's going to just have a nice smooth action all the way around. Come in, even though that surface wasn't on our part, it was actually outside of the part. I mean, actually, it was outside in certain areas and inside of certain areas, the tool is still going to tilt relative to our reference surface. I'm super excited about this option this year. I really can find a lot of good uses for that and make life a lot easier without having to do that. The clean core technique, plus we're gonna have a better step over, less distortion. Awesome, Brian. Thank you for that. Uh, this is John again and uh, the Tempe, Arizona office uh, over here with Brian Gleason, uh, Jimmy uh, Wabe, our master cam cam manager for all of our offices, and also Angie uh, Hall here in the uh, Arizona office as well. So unified multi-axis, man, good stuff. Uh, wish I had some of that stuff back in the day uh, when I was making molds. 
uh, it made it a lot easier to make some uh, decisions, some cut strategies. But all those tool paths, the guys that were there before multi-axis, uh, as you know, they're all still there. Uh, they've been combined in 2023 into that unified multi-axis, a lot more flexible. You can make some nice uh, decisions and without having to go out, come back in again, uh, the files are automatically converted. Your five axis, your multi-axis toolpaths, when you bring them into 2023, they'll move those into the unified toolpath and, you know, and, and how about that tilt rel relative to the surface. Um, loving that. So anyway, great job, Brian, as always. Um, hey, uh, Jason, why don't you uh, take us home from here? And uh, but before you do, I just want to mention, yeah, uh, I see a lot of you guys from Arizona, New Mexico. Um, we're hoping to get over to uh, do something. I say hoping. We, we plan on getting over there to New Mexico. I see I got a few of you New Mexico people here today as well. Phoenix, uh, our Tempe, actually, uh, open house, like right there on the August 9th some good food and drink and uh, do a deeper dive. We'll have computers set up and we just love to see you come out between 10 to six and uh, Jason, take us home, man. Let's go into it. Hey man, I'm just here ready to talk about the after party, the fun stuff, right, John? So as John mentioned, I know you already said that you've got a party going on on August 2nd, every office opening their doors. We talked about the third party vendors are gonna be here. We talked about the awesome food, the awesome drink, this is a customer appreciation event. You came today, you got a little 10,000 foot view of what's possible at the new MasterCam 2023. Now we wanna dig into a deeper dive. This is where you get a chance to come to our office. Now you need to register. Some people are just gonna show up out of the blue, that's fine, but don't come to Seattle without registering. I need to make sure we have enough for everybody to drink. Yep. I've got food mm -hmm. for a thousand, but I need to make sure you stay hydrated. So come prepared to learn. Bring all your good questions. We're going to do a deep dive. We every everybody's got a classroom open, ready to teach. So um, you know we're going to have some. I can't talk about it now. I'm not supposed to. We're going to have some giveaways. Um, we're going to have the food to drink. We're going to have third party vendors, and the boss is going to come up to make sure we don't get into too much trouble. But we'll we'll get it we'll get it sorted before then. 